Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. The portions of our gospel lesson that I want to focus on upon this morning are verses 7 through 14, which have been read. So we might bow our heads in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, as we are gathered here to hear your word, Give us your Holy Spirit that we might look into our own hearts and see where maybe sometimes we think more of ourselves than we think of others. And as we read in the Gospel lesson today, we want to find the viewpoint of our Savior Jesus Christ on the subject of self-importance. We ask these things, Lord, in your name and for your sake. Amen. When uh, Nikita Khrushchev was Russia's top man, he had a trip to the United States of America. And among the other places that he visited in America was a garment factory. There he especially admired one bolt of fine woolen cloth. And so the factory executive gave him enough of that material to have a suit made. In fact, in Moscow, then, Khrushchev took the material to his tailor. And to his surprise, he was told that there was not enough cloth for a suit. How can that be, Khrushchev said. The tailor in America measured me very carefully and said that there was more than enough material for a three-piece three suit. Comrade, replied the Moscow tailor, you must remember that in America you are not as big a man as you are in Russia. And looking at our gospel lesson today, I believe that we find our Lord's viewpoint on the subject of self-importance. The problem is as old as the human race. We all need to feel important, I believe. And I suppose that we got our first parents as they got on the wrong track and we followed after them way back in the Garden of Eden. They wanted to be like God. And to this day, a good number of problems that we have in the world, in the church, in our homes, in ourselves, is the same urge to be what the modern alphabet language calls the IP, a very important person. So, what can we do about it? Well, to begin with, I believe we need to know what's wrong with the desire to be important. Pride usually heads the list of when the so-called seven deadly sins are mentioned. And I suppose that a casual reading of our gospel lesson for this morning would leave us thinking that Jesus himself is also warning us against the sin of pride. But pride isn't wrong in itself. The Bible is pretty clear about this. It says that you and I were made in the image of God. Just a little less than God. And we were crowned with glory and honor. Jesus is God. And he calls each one of us brothers and sisters and friends and his very own. What better qualifications can we find for a real VIP. We 
find also that there were some that belittled God and his creation. There was Moses, for instance, when he was asked to be a speaker for the children of Israel and telling them what God had to tell them through him. And what was his reason for not going to do it? My speech isn't good. I can't do it. Or there was that fellow that was given that one talent, and he did not think it was worth using, and he planted it in the ground. Such a lack of pride is apparently an insult to the God who made us, to say nothing of what it means to be beaten down, hang dog attitude that we might get and it trying to attempt doing any activity. So pride in itself is okay. But I believe what Jesus is talking about is an imitation pride. A lady lost her beautiful setting of an expensive diamond out of her engagement ring. And of course, she was very heartbroken. But then she thought of a cheap imitation way. And I don't think anyone would notice a difference in this imitation ring that I bought. And so it is also, my friends, to lose our godlike qualities, our most of them at least, and that, I believe, is what happened to our first parents when they sinned. And that is what sin is all about. It is not living up to our potential, the things that God gave us, the ability that we have to do activities and jobs. We also lose our self-respect and then it is a pitiful way that we try to bluff and show our cheap imitations of the real quality of life that God has given to each one of us. Little Billy returned from his first day of school and he informed his mother that he was the best looking boy in the class. Well, who told you that? His mother asked. No one had to tell me, said little Billy. I saw it as I looked around the room and looked at the others. That may be humorous to a little child, but it is sad when adults behave in such a childish way. Way. Sitting down in the place of honor, as our parable said this morning, as Jesus described it, expecting compliments for things that we do, offended at not being thanked, hurt when someone forgets our birthday or anniversary. Crushed at not being elected to an office. Broken hearted at not making the athletic team. Angry at not being remembered by our name. Insulted at not being noticed. Such a horrible imitation of the real pride that God gave to us in the very beginning. Only the person with the right kind of pride can do what Jesus suggests here in these two parables. When you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place. Not that we should make a boast of our humility, because, my friends, that would be false pride. Bishop Sheen often says,
said, Humility for the Christian is like underwear. You should wear it all the time, but you should never let it show. Real pride just doesn't care one way or the other. As the parable says, when your host comes, he may say to you, when you have taken the highest seat, friend, go higher. Or he may not. It doesn't matter what happens, not when you are a real VIP. He who humbles himself will be exalted. Of course, it doesn't take a bit of self-examination to reach to that point until I realize that I have lost the real diamond and that the imitation just doesn't look the same. And I can go on fooling myself. They tell of a man who went to a psychiatrist complaining that he was suffering from inferior complex. And so the psychiatrist gave him a series of tests, interviews, and then he came to his conclusion and he said, I have good news for you. You do not have inferiority complex. You are inferior. <laughs> My friends, we are all inferior. We are that way because each of us are sinful. Dr. Paul Shearer used to say that false pride was like starching a shirt before it was washed. Starch makes a dirty shirt look even worse. And then when we have lost the godlike qualities with which we were created, then just starching up the old wretch of a self that we are with false pride does not do the job. There is only one way to get rid of the dirt. And that's what the Bible has in mind when it says, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Jesus came into this world to clean up our lives and make them the way they were when God created each one of us. When the human soul is cleansed of its guilt and shame, then there can be real pride again in what God has done with each one of us. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Nothing can give us the inner sense of personal worth but the presence of Jesus Christ in our lives. Nothing can give us Jesus but His Holy Spirit working through the Word of God and in the sacraments. And as we partake of the Lord's Supper this morning, we are confessing our sins first, and then we are coming to receive His body and blood in with and under the bread and wine for the forgiveness of our sins a cleansing of our lives. And so we must use these helps if we ever want to join the ranks of real VIPs. The more that each one of us learns of Jesus, the more that we can be proud of what he has done for us. When you and I really feel important deep down inside, then we can care less if we get recognition. And best of all, we can give our lives to the Lord in eager service. Because we are sure of His promise, you will be repaid in the resurrection of the just. A great surgeon once told when he had given the greatest inspiration for his successful career. He said, when I was a medical student, I was assigned to watch a very famous surgeon perform a difficult operation. His assistant failed to 
show up, and he chose me to help save that life. And I was so proud that I was determined to be a great surgeon also. And I realized that this was for me. Then there was also an evangelist. And he said, I realize that God could save the world without me. But when he told me that I could help him, I was proud of the privilege. My friends, let us recognize those things that the Lord has given to each one of us and be proud of them, that we were created by God in His image and that we are sons of God, heirs to eternal life. Amen. And the peace of God that passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus.